Okay, and welcome back. Um, in this video, we're going to review all of the programming and settings in the DX7 radio um, for the next star number two. So, to begin with, um, you may have seen before that the throttle trim is at zero, and I have all the other trims set at zero. Actually, that one should be. Must have bumped that one a couple of times. Okay, so the throttle trims are uh, all the trims are at zero. Okay, rudder, um, aileron, elevator, and throttle trims. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll just go down the menu item. You saw before that the uh, travel adjust for the throttle when it's in. Uh, uh, when throttle is idle um, at 66 when it's full throttle it's 52 and that was to uh, limit the um, um, endpoints of the throttle servo uh, I'm gonna back up a second just in case you know you heard this thing click and I'm gonna clear that timer that's to the timer by hitting the clear button Okay, so that's good. All the other travels are at 100%. And uh, for sub trim, I try to start out with no sub trim on all airplanes. So those are all zero. For the reverse switch, um, the throttle is reversed. I think you probably saw that before. <clears throat> if it's not reversed, you need, if you don't need it reversed uh, for, for, because of the way you're setting up the, the servos you use, that's fine. But for the servos I use, I require reverse. And don't forget, if you do a reverse, then you um, rebind your machine for the throttle only. It, right aileron is down, normal. Elevator and rudder are up, which are reversed. And then the gear doesn't matter, it's down. The left aileron is down, so both ailerons are down, and the aux one is down, which is not used. Okay, so that's um, uh, servo setup. Back up to the next one, DR and Expo. Remember, I got low rates, mid rates, and high rates. They're on switch B. And uh, so the aileron low rates are uh, curve zero, 75 uh, at, for the rate, 20% expo, 90% for the rate, uh, for mid rates, and 20% expo. Low rates, mid rates. You can hear it speaking, mid rates. And uh, this is based on flying experience, so that's what I normally fly at is mid rates. I usually start a student out at low rates, but I try to transition him to mid rates as soon as he can, and because uh, it flies a little bit better, uh, better response on mid rates. Um, if you want the low rate a little bit higher, I'd recommend 80 and 20, uh, 80 and 20 um, for ailerons, a little bit more responsive. <clears throat> and then the high rates are 100%. Always like my high rates at 100%. Um, and uh, 20 for the uh, Expo. So for the elevator, the elevator is 80 and 20, 90 and 20, and 120. So 100% and 20% Expo, 90, and 80 and 20. So then for the rudder, Rudder is very effective, uh, so I've limited the low rate at 50 uh, and 20, mid rates at 70 and 20, and that's probably uh, the best general place to have the mid rate, uh, again, for the rudder. It gives you good rudder response uh, in the air and doesn't get all wild on the ground while you're taxiing. High rates, High rates I'd only use in the air, never on the ground. So that's the um, DR and Expo. Next is differential. Because we're using two different channels on the ailerons, we can use differential. And this only shows up, this 
menu item only shows up if you have selected uh, dual ailerons. So position zero I have on switch A and I labeled switch A with the voice which you'll see in a minute so switch A um, so bank zero, there wasn't anything called differential. There is a new feature out uh, for this radio I haven't tried yet, which is you can create your own voice uh, uh, items and add it, uh, your own voice into this. I might do that for differential at some point in the future. But right now I'm using bank zero and bank one. So bank zero means no differential. Bank one, bank one is 35% differential. And again, based on experience, I started at 50 and I dropped all the way down to 30 and settled on 35. Bank zero. Okay, <clears throat> so that's differential. At some point that differential may be permanent. You can make it permanent um, uh, if you want. Uh, I choose to sometimes I want to turn it off just to see how it's flying with or without. <coughs> okay, throttle cut. Um, the default is minus 130. It wasn't shutting all the way off, so I went to minus 150. It's on switch I, which is the uh, bind button, the momentary bind button on the top, black button, and uh, no delay. So if I hit this, throttle cut. Uh, I have a voice response on it, and you can watch the throttle go from 65% all the way cut. down, and that cuts off the throttle. Uh, cuts off the engine. <clears throat> okay, throttle curve we don't use, mixing we don't use, range test you'll need to do at some point, uh, and I'll show you how to do a range test in a future video. The timer is a countdown timer, 10 minutes, uh, which is a good, uses about half the tank of gas, which is what I like to do, 10 minutes is long enough, especially for a student. Um, the throttle stick activates it at 60% because I like to taxi around and start it. Um, Start and taxi around um, below like 50%, and uh, then the timer will activate at 60. Uh, the one time needs to be active because you don't want to pull the throttle back to idle and the counter stop. So active means one time it starts and doesn't stop until it uh, reaches 10 minutes. And then in the next one, I have voice commands. Every minute it's going to count down. Tell me a voice. At the one minute it's going to give me a voice. At the 30 seconds it's going to give me a voice. I didn't care about the 20 second. Ten to f so it's a tone. Uh, 10 second to one second is a tone. Expiration of voice and every minute up is a voice. The next page just shows you're going to get tones for starting and stopping and resetting the timer. Okay, so timer's good. Uh, telemetry I already went through. Uh, I'll just show it to you again. Uh, I do have a 60 second report and um, I'm probably going to move, in fact I think I'll do it now. I'll move the the minimum voltage because we're using a six uh, cell pack. Uh, five is a little bit low to get a warning so I'm going to go to five and a half. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so telemetry is done, custom voice setups, as I said I have a custom voice setup for the throttle cut and the bank one. And those are just very easy to set up. You can, so if I go to normal uh, and throttle cut, you just select the switch, in this case switch I, which is a momentary black button on the top, and then position zero is normal, position one is throttle cut. You just get the positive voice feedback uh, when you th cut the throttle. And uh, so the switch A is where I have the uh, differential and bank zero, bank one. Okay. In the system setup, um, uh, the model type never changes. It's an aircraft, it's a default aircraft. The model name is uh, model number 06, next star number 2. Uh, aircraft type is important because we do have the dual ailerons and normal. In my other Nexstar number one, I have the third servo here for the flaps. So um, you just come down here and do the change that to um, 
um, uh, two ailerons, one flap. But in this case, we're going to not do flapperons. We're going to just have the dual aileron, and normal tail means two servos for the tail. Okay, so dual ailerons uh, is the aircraft type, and tail is normal. Flight mode setup, uh, switch B gives me my three flight modes, high, mid, and low. Uh, you can have on this radio, I think, uh, more than three, uh, but I'm not positive about that. Three is all I ever use. And spoken flight modes is low rates, speak low rates, and you can test it. Low rates. Um, and then mid rates and high rates is the spoken flight mode. Channel assignment <clears throat> are all defaulted, no changes. Throttle uh, the, for the gear isn't used. Aux 1 is the left aileron, aux 2 is not used. And here's where you set the switch. So for aux 1, so these are all normal, you can't change those. Uh, I'm using the A switch for the gear, that's okay because gear's not active. Aux 2 is the H switch, and that's a switch I'll show you in a few minutes, which is for the trainer mode, uh, switching between uh, instructor has control versus student has control. So Aux 2 has the H in it, and you'll see that again in just a minute. Trim setup, all default, don't change anything, haven't found a need to yet. So in warnings, um, there's a warning if when you turn on the radio if the throttle's over 10%. In the flight modes, I don't want a warning unless I'm in high rate because I don't want to take off in high rate. Low and mid rates are good for takeoff. Uh, flaps are an actual aux 2, uh, which is under switch H. Uh, if it's under 0%, meaning it's in the student has control function, then it'll give you a warning and your radio won't come on until you put it in instructor has control. Uh, so I only have one channel warning there. Time we already looked at, pre-flight not needed, frame rate not needed, buy not needed, trainer. Okay. So in the trainer, in the wireless trainer setup, I like to use programmable master and programmable master mean the programmable part means the Buddy box is programmable, not that the master is programmable. So, programmable buddy box master is how you should read that. And in this case, the slave has all uh, channels except for aux 2. I use the switch H, um, which is the upper right corner uh, toward the back, and I use the master row override inhibit because you'd if you I, I sit there and move the controls around as a student flying and if you do that if you move a control then you immediately take control so I want the because um, I like to you know before he lands I put the throttle to a hundred percent just in case he screws up the landing I got hundred percent when I flip the switch and the airplane you know starts flying again um, so the switch H is um, how I do that and here you have the bind button so to bind the buddy box uh, you hit the bind button and just run through a normal bind procedure on the buddy box so that's programmable master is the best way to do that okay and the other thing you do with trainers is have trainer alerts so in you have three possibilities the instructor has control the student has control or there's no student signal and so you go through here and set up those voice alerts um, that says so the student can hear you, which is a good thing, uh, when you take control. And the student can also hear when you give him it back, but you always, I always give a very loud and clear, you've got the aircraft when I switch to the student. And it's also nice to know if this, you switch to the student and you get a no student signal, you better get it back right away because uh, uh, he turned off his radio or something, or she. 
So that's trainer alerts, uh, digital switches we don't need, sound utilities we don't need, system settings we don't need, and um, those are all defaults. Okay, so that's all of the system setup functions. And um, um, when you're setting these up, um, you can do this setup before you even start building the airplane. Uh, I've decided to do this one at the end. Um, you've already seen me do some of these setups, um, but you can do it anytime you want. Um, and, and again, well, I guess I got a minus two there. I didn't realize that was a minus two, so let me put that at zero. Um, so when you set these up, if um, uh, if you find an improvement, which I've found several, um, uh, I've had uh, other instructors fly this with a buddy box, and I've had uh, myself flown it on the buddy box uh, with another instructor on the master. And it's a good way to make sure that your airplane is ready for training if you're going to use this as a trainer, as an instructor. If you are just a be, um, starting out in, in glow airplanes and using this as a as a, uh, just a you know another airplane for you, and you're not going to use the instructors, then you can just leave all the um, trainer um, uh, settings uh, to default inhibited. All right, thank you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, and stay tuned for the next video.